Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, bouncing around town today, checking out a few things, see what's going on. Um, I'm unable to really find good information about the status of what's going on with the Waco Suspension Bridge, so every once in a while I just kind of come down here to see what's going on. Now, they still aren't open, but I still like to kind of show the progress that's going on. And uh, as I drove by a little bit, it looks like they've made some serious progress in terms of getting the place ready to open. But we're going to take a closer look today and see what's going on. And then I got a couple other things I need to do uh, to uh, take care of today. So let's get going. Yeah, see, as you can already tell, it's way over overdue in terms of the timeline. They were saying 2020 to 2022, and we're already into March of 2023. So, yeah, nothing here uh, giving me any, any any estimate on when it's going to be open. It's kind of windy and chilly out today, as you probably can hear. But as you can see, they still have the uh, barricades around the place. Um, I did notice on the other side that that the gate was open. And I could see inside a little bit, but I don't know. It doesn't look like they're open here. But let's. But I can definitely see people in there working. Anything here? No. Still the same old information there. But look, they got the uh, the flagstone put down. That looks really nice. Looks like they're just doing a little bit of landscaping here, getting some of the dirt, dirt ready to put around here. But the area does look really nice. Can't wait to get, uh, walk across this again. They've supposedly done all sorts of work. I know they replaced all the cables that go across and they replaced the uh, the platform that you walk on. I think it used to be made out of wood, and after 150 years, it was getting to be in pretty bad shape. But uh, yeah, it looks like maybe they're getting close. I hope so. Like I said, it doesn't look like they got a whole lot to do. Maybe they're gonna do some planning and stuff in there, uh, but I don't know. Like I said, uh, when I drove by it on the other side, the gate was open. You could actually peer in, but not on this side. Now, something else I kind of want to do today while I'm downtown. You may recall a few weeks ago, I, when I was down here looking at the, looking for the status on the bridge that I just stumbled upon the dedication ceremony of the Jesse Washington uh, Memorial. They put a historical marker up in front of City Hall. And like I said, I was really happy to be a part of that. I showed you most of that ceremony. But at the time, you know, there were a lot of family members and dignitaries and the likes that, that wanted to... Uh, you know, get photos, and I wanted to give them the chance to do that. So I didn't really get a chance to get up close to the memorial. Today I want to get over there and take a look at that. And that's the outside of the Waco Convention Center, and that kind of reminds me too, they're having an event next weekend, and I want to definitely go to that, and I think I can get tickets today, so maybe I'm going to try and see if I can get tickets uh, to this thing, because that's going to be really, really cool. Yeah, a little spoiler alert, what our next video is going to be about. I've been reading up on this thing. This thing's going to be awesome. I can't wait to go to this. Wouldn't it be funny if I could find a tortoise for Beth? Yeah, here we are at City Hall. And there's the marker right there. The Waco Horror, The Lynching of Jesse Washington. The history of McLennan County like that of Texas and the nation clouded by racial tensions is sometimes manifested in violence. From 1860 through 1922, 43 lynchings were documented here. Following reconstruction, laws were instituted that held black, black African Americans back from education, jobs, 
and the participation in many forms of government. The most notorious local act of racial violence occurred in 1916 on May 8th in the farming community of Robinson. Miss Lucy, Lucy Fryer was found bludgeoned to death near her home. Jesse Washington, a teenage African-American farmhand, was arrested for her murder. Known to be illiterate and possibly having an intellectual disability, Washington changed his story from denial to admission of guilt after being questioned for days. One week later, a large crowd gathered. He was brought to Waco for a trial. Following a brief trial, and after four minutes of jury deliberation, Washington was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Immediately, he was seized by a horde of onlookers and dragged several blocks to the city hall where he was beaten, stabbed, hanged, mutilated, and burned to death as thousands cheered. Jesse Washington's horrific death received unparalleled nationwide public attention. Several reports, particularly from outside Texas, denounced the act as a breakdown of law and morality. The newly formed Institute, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, now the nation's oldest civil rights organization, hired Elizabeth Freeman to investigate. Famed editor W.E.B. Dubois used her findings and commemorative photos, photographs taken at the scene as a basis for the NAAC's July 1916 issue of The Crisis. Widely, a widely distributed publication referred to the event as the Waco Horror. Dubois and the NAAC made the atrocity a turning point in the national anti-lynching movement and a step in the long march towards the promise of civil rights for all. I am so glad this is here. This is long, long, long overdue. Now, interestingly enough, the research I've done indicated that what the lynching didn't happen here. I'm guessing they put it in front of the city hall because that was a more prominent location. But my research actually indicates that it happened over here. And you recall I did this video a couple years ago where I detailed this. And I basically found one historical photograph that was a very, very high resolution image. And it could show, it showed, you know, the tree with the corpse of Jesse hanging from it and the crowd of people around it posing for the photograph. And in the background, I could see a, a sign for a liquor wholesaler uh, that was over there. That's over there where the uh, Spice Village uh, place is right now, but there used to be a wholesale liquor store over there. Uh, and I was able to figure out where that was. And from that image, I was able to estimate that the lynching probably happened where these trees are right now. But like I said, that's behind the uh, city hall building, so. Every time I go by here, I always say, rest in peace, Jesse. Yeah, so this is the actual city hall building that existed before the current one. The, new, the current one was built in the 50s. And as I'm looking at this picture, you can actually see the liquor wholesaler right there in the picture. So, yeah, see that definitely confirms it. The building is facing the same direction the current one is. So the memorial is probably like right about here. And then it was in this back corner here where the horror occurred. It's amazing. I've, I, I walked by this picture and photographed it a few times, but never realized that the liquor wholesaler was there. Another Fred, uh, Fred Gildersleeve photo. All right, a little bit of mixed communication here. Apparently they don't sell the tickets ahead of time, at least not on the location here. Um, you can get them day of, and they say you can uh, buy them online. However, I was reading on the Facebook page uh, where I first found out about this, and they said they weren't gonna sell them online. Now, they were also saying that you can buy the tickets day of, like I said, and they didn't anticipate that it was gonna sell out. So I probably will just come by here uh, next week and uh, get them day of. Now I got one more place I want to stop by and check out. Um, 
you recall that when I started getting into the model railroading a little bit, I visited a local company called Hobbytown uh, to hopefully get some uh, supplies for my uh, model railroad set. And unfortunately, I couldn't really do it because they didn't really have a lot of inventory. They had one little uh, aisle that was half filled up with trains and, and most of it was just, you know, uh, you know train kits you get the whole thing you get the track you get that you get the train you get you know all the all the stuff you need to set up your own train set but it didn't really have like individual parts and components but I started following this place almost immediately because one of the times I was there they mentioned to me that they were moving into a larger store and I've been following them on Facebook and they're getting pretty close now to the point where they're ready to open up that store and I actually want to go by and see how the store is coming along because uh, I am hoping that uh, once they do move into the larger store they'll carry more inventory of train stuff so like I said I'm still following these guys and if I can uh, support my hobby and support a local business at the same time that's a good thing so this is the little hobby town store that i've tried visiting uh to support my my uh new train hobby here and it's just a tiny little store the store is probably 30 feet wide and 50 feet deep so what are we looking at you know 1500 square feet there's just not a lot of room in there but they are moving down the street here next to the uh, Christian bookstore down here and they have a much larger space down here and I've been watching them on Facebook because they've been they're very excited about this no estimate yet when they're going to open but the store is getting to the point where it's almost there and uh, this is the place right here. Coming soon. Top five biggest in the US. So this is gonna be the new location here. And yeah, it's gonna be a big place. So like I said, hopefully there'll be uh, a little bit more train stuff in here. I don't know, you know hopefully, because Right now what they seem to focus on is like puzzles, games, and RC stuff. Radio controlled cars and that kind of stuff. But hopefully they'll expand and maybe do a little bit more with the trains in here. They're definitely going to have enough room, right? Look at how big that place is. It's probably 75 feet side to side and probably 200 feet to the back. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what they do with this. I'll keep you in the loop. So sometimes the best way to get information is to ask. So I actually went into the Hobby Town store and walked, talked to one of the people there. And they said they're planning on opening sometime between April 15th and the 1st of May. And they say they are planning to expand the model railroad stuff. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you in the loop. So I got one more stop to make on the way home. I need to stop by Home Depot because I need to uh, replace one of my propane cylinders. I also want to get some uh, some disposable gloves because sometimes when I work with like stains and paints and stuff like that, I want to kind of keep my hands uh, from getting too dirty and I've used up all my gloves. I also want to explore uh, what I can do to paint my street address on the curb. If I can get like a stencil, or something there with my uh, street address or with my number on it because I noticed there's a company going around uh, offering to paint uh, your street address on the curb and if I can do that I'd rather just do that myself that's a lot easier than uh, having to pay somebody else to do it right so I'm gonna explore that issue too and see what we can do all right, I'm back from Home Depot. I got uh, my new propane tank, which I really needed. I got some of the gloves, and I did a little bit of research on the uh, stencils for painting the address on the curb. Now, I'm not sure I might be able to use the paint, some of the spray paint that I already have. They had the stencils, and I could get that and do that pretty easily. But I want to do some research to see if they have a special kind of paint that you can order that's maybe like reflective versus like the matte or gloss paints that I have now. 
So I want to do some research on that and figure out what goes on. Uh, but uh, like I said, I got everything else. I also uh, dealt with another problem that I've had to deal with a couple of times with regards to my trash cans. Um, when the trash men come pick up the trash in the, you know, on my block, they don't go down one side of the street and then do a U-turn, come back on the other side of the street. They just have guys that run to both sides of the street at the same time and pick up the trash cans from both sides, dump them into the truck, and, and sometimes they accidentally put the trash can back on the wrong side of the street. And I had that happen a few weeks ago where one of my trash cans disappeared and I was very like 99.9% .9 certain that they just put it on the other side of the street because I could see one that looked like the one that was missing on the other side of the street. But I wanted to make sure and fortunately my neighbor uh, realized what happened, they brought it back. But in order to prevent that from happening again, I got some like ad adhesive labels that I'm gonna put on the trash can that I'll just put the number of the, of the house on. And so in the future, if that happens, I'll know right away, that's mine. So I'm gonna install those on there and uh, I think that brings us to the end of our video today. So I'm um, gonna wrap this one up. Thank you as always for watching. And I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.